yes, I am in my pyjamas uh, because I'm ill once again. So that's another thing that's happening. Uh, I probably will be ill every week now until uh, around mid-March. So look forward to that, I certainly am. Anyway, before I fall into a fit of vaporish despondency, I just wanted to talk to you about Northanger Abbey, which is, in my opinion, Jane Austen's most underrated work, and I think potentially her best. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be telling you everything that you need to know about that novel. Oh, I'm losing my voice already. Okay, let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Let's go now, now, yeah now but I'm just going to try and go through this as quickly as possible and before I lose my voice so the four main things that I'm going to go through today are the literary context the main characters a basic plot summary and the main themes and areas for analysis so let's get into it let's get into Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen which was published after she died now this is a gothic story but only kinda because what it really is is a satire of a gothic story but actually at its foundation this is just another Jane Austen romance. It is in the same vein as all of her other romantic novels and falls into the same tropes that we all have come to love and know of her work. So the literary context of Northanger Abbey. Now, you could argue that Northanger Abbey is an early example of a romantic comedy, and in fact, it's said that this book was inspired by the novel The Female Quixote. But this book has come in for a lot of trash talk with literary critics, and particularly, she has been accused, this is Austen, she has been accused of disjointed writing styles in this book by critics of the 20th and 21st century who see that her use of the gothic writing style alongside her own more fluffy, charming writing style just did not work. They really didn't think that they worked alongside each other. And some people didn't think that she wrote in the gothic style very well. It was a poor parody because it wasn't very good. Other critics have also said that Austen put satire and comedy above character consistency, which is something that people have come to know and expect in her novels. And this is particularly thrown an accusation at Catherine Morland, the protagonist, who people just have said that does not act consistently. She does things that are completely unexpected for her character and seem very over-exaggerated and a little bit silly. And it seems to be that this is done for the sake of comedy and that basically Austen has sacrificed her protagonist just to make her reader laugh. That is not my opinion. I actually really liked the main character, but this is what people have said. Now, contemporary responses. There hasn't been a significant piece of work collecting or looking at the contemporary responses to Northanger Abbey in particular. As far as I'm aware, I looked pretty hard, but I couldn't find anything. But, sorry, I'm getting out of breath here. <laughs> but, um, like with many of Jane Austen's books, what I have found is that contemporary responses mainly focused on the realism and how she kind of replicated real life in her books. This was for good and bad. Some people loved that about her books and thought that she added this kind of charm to real life that made people fall in love with the world around them. But other people actually accused Jane Austen at the time of having a poor imagination and not being a very good writer which seems crazy, right? Anyway, let's move on. Novels in Northanger Abbey are a huge thing. So the two main novels that come up that would have been very well known to contemporary readers are The Monk and The Mysteries of Udolpho. These would have been probably known by every single reader who would have read Northanger Abbey at the time that it was published, but they probably would have been read by these readers too. And these are the books that Northanger Abbey is kind of being a satire of. It's kind of making fun of this style of book. But Austen comes in defense of novels. She breaks the fourth wall and speaks directly to her readers, which as far as I'm aware, Austen does that in all of her books, I think if I'm remembering correctly. But here she kind of goes on a bit of a rant and she really is like, no, novels are good. Why do people keep on disparaging novels? Uh, novel writing is a good use of one's time and reading novels is a good use of one's time. And anybody who says otherwise is very silly is basically what she says. Austen also seems to divide her characters by their opinions on novels, so she has characters who don't think that reading novels is a good use of one's time, and she has characters who like reading novels and do think that it's a good use of their time. So, main characters, okay, will my voice last, let's see. Catherine Wallen, she's 17 years old, she's the romantic heroine, the protagonist of this story, and she meets and becomes super BFFs with Isabella Thorpe, who is a young woman who she meets in Bath. Then we have Henry Tilney, who she also meets in Bath at a party. He's very charming, very funny, very nice to her, and she kind of develops a fancy for him very quickly. 
John Thorpe, who is Isabella's brother, develops a bit of a thing for Catherine, but Catherine doesn't reciprocate, so nothing ever happens there. Then we have James Morland, who is Catherine's brother, and he doesn't really do a lot of things in the book, to be honest with you, and he's a bit of a boring character, but he does play a significant role in terms of the development of the other characters. Then we have Eleanor Tilney, who is Henry's sister, who is lovely and kind to Catherine, but she's also very sad and very lonely. And then we have General Tilney, who is Henry and um, Eleanor's father and is the absolute villain of this story. So, a plot summary. This actually I discovered was quite hard to summarise, like when I was reading it I felt like the plot was pretty simple, but when I came back to summarise it, it actually suddenly felt quite complicated, so just bear with me here. So Catherine Morlin goes to Bath with a couple called the Allens. She is absolutely obsessed with novels and she meets Isabella Thorpe, who is a fellow young lady and also a fellow novel obsessive, and they become super BFFs forever. Henry Tilney is also introduced to her in Bath and he's very charming and introduces himself in a very funny way and impresses himself upon her and she kind of develops feelings for him. This is Catherine, by the way, not Isabella, I hope that was clear. John Thorpe is Isabella's brother who does keep on coming up in the book and he's just a bit annoying and a bit rude and is a gentleman but doesn't really behave like a gentleman and um, this causes some issues in the book. Isabella becomes engaged to Catherine's brother and although Catherine is a bit upset by this in the sense that she had no idea that they had a thing together, she's very very happy for them both. But maybe things aren't going to turn out as well as it seems because this happens pretty early on in the book so of course there's still time for drama and Henry's brother Captain Tilney kind of appears in Bath and is flirting with Isabella and Isabella doesn't really seem to mind it at all which really annoys Catherine as you would imagine but she doesn't have time to think about that because she gets an invitation to stay at Northanger Abbey, which is the Tilney family home by General Tilney, the father of the family, who seems to really, really like Catherine for some reason. He's being so, so nice to her, despite the fact that he seems a bit offish and a little bit kind of not very friendly in general. So they go to Northanger Abbey and it's a spooky old family home, although not quite as spooky as Catherine had hoped it would be. But this doesn't stop her imagination from running wild and she imagines all sorts of spooky, crazy, strange, gothic things are happening all around her. But of course they aren't and that's where the humour comes into it but her imagination runs a little bit too wild and she begins to think that General Tilney was responsible for the death of his wife and in fact thinks that he probably murdered her and has covered it up. Which is of course not the truth and is a little bit crazy. Now Henry discovers that this is what um, Catherine is thinking and he's kind of cross with her. He's not really, really angry with her, but he thinks that she's really silly and he tells her that she's silly and her imagination has run amok and that she's read too many novels and that she's just being a silly young girl. And she feels really, really embarrassed and a fool for ever thinking such a thing and that how horrible could she be to be staying in somebody's home and thinking all these horrible things about them, thinking that they're a murderer and all of that. Now, while this is happening, Isabella and Catherine's brother are no longer engaged because Isabella has been persuaded by Captain Tilney to break off her engagement, but of course he wants nothing to do with her once the engagement is broken off. This is a whole other subplot, which is kind of interesting, but just kind of pops up now and again. And suddenly and inexplicably, Catherine is demanded to go home. I mean, she's having a lovely time at Northanger Abbey and the family seem to really, really love her. Particularly Eleanor is really, really fond of her and insists that she stays for another month at least. But all of a sudden, Catherine is told to go home and extremely rudely, she's like almost kicked out in the middle of the night, like first thing in the morning she has to leave. The father doesn't even check if she has any money. And at 17 years old, She's made to travel all the way by herself, no servant, no help, nothing. And she has no idea what she has done wrong that has made General Tilney, who liked her so much, suddenly hate her. And she does worry a little bit that maybe it's because she'd assumed and believed that he had been capable of murder. But what we actually find out that General Tilney had liked Catherine so much because he believed that she was very wealthy and General Tilney was a bit of a gold digger and he wanted his son to marry a rich woman. But as soon as he discovered that Catherine was not as rich as he had been led to believe, not by her, by the way, by somebody else, then he wanted nothing to do with her and he kicked her out of her house like a horrible, villainous, cruel man. 
but luckily Henry is nothing like his father and it's absolutely appalled that his father could treat Catherine in such a way and he rides out all the way to Catherine's home to tell her how sorry he is that this happened to her and that he loves her and proposes to her and they of course get married and live happily happily ever after. So the main themes in this book and the first theme is novels and their value to society, to readers and all of that stuff. Then we have Jane Austen's use of realism, which is a really common uh, point of analysis if you're studying Jane Austen. Then we have the use of humour, we have marriage, we have money, we have uh, class, social class and hierarchy. Then we have the rules of polite society in early 19th century England. We have families and their, their roles uh, in a person's life and how somebody should conduct themselves with their family. And then we have love and romance. So these are the main themes of this novel. And I've also put together just three key texts that I think could be really useful if you are studying this book and would be a really good starting point for anybody who is writing a paper on Northanger Abbey. Anyway, I hope that that has been helpful. My voice has managed to last this whole time, so that's good. Um, I hope that has been helpful. And if you have any other questions on Northanger Abbey or any other suggestions for videos that you'd like me to do, any other books that you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments down below because I'm always happy to help in that way. So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed that and that you feel that you know the book Northanger Abbey a little bit better 